Hi everybody, so welcome to channel. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different format. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm just going to talk to you about um, cosmetic news, beauty trends, consumer trends, what's happening around the world. And hopefully this will inspire you to do maybe different kind of cosmetic formulations if you're a cosmetic formulator. If not, you, you can just relax and just enjoy the show. If you have any questions or if you have some kind of new products that you're formulating, if you're a cosmetic formulator, let us know in the comments. Just keep the channel engaging and I'll also show you some of my products that I formulated that could give you some inspiration. Right, let's start. So um, I'm actually going to do a little bit of shaving. So um, my beard's grown quite a lot and I just got a bit of nick here, but don't worry about it. And um, so what I'm going to start with um, is actually talk to you about the color of the year. So, um, you know, the Pantone, but the global color um, institution that actually knows all about the color and they determine the, what should be the color of the year. And they come up this year and the, with the color of the year it's called peach fuzz. So it's kind of very peachy, fuzzy, very warm color they chose and the reason they chose this i just put a picture over here the reason they chose this is because of what's happening around the world people are looking for sort of like a warmness togetherness um resiliency you know feeling positivity and conveying you know better emotions better vibes so it's kind of like they watch what's going around and they kind of realize that people need a little bit of positivity and actually we just need a lot of positivity what's happening in, in Middle East, you know, with the Ukraine and global, you know, um, <clears throat> inflation, uh, cost of living, all these information, all these things are actually impacting people and it's kind of makes, uh, you know, feeling people want to be together, just feeling for looking for something positivity, which all we did right now. So this color is actually makes sense in, in a way. And if you're a cosmetic formulator, peach fuzz is actually quite easy to you know, make in your formulation. You can add some kind of, maybe it's a mica or some natural colorants. Um, you can use uh, some kind of nice oils to make the color of the cream. If you're making especially a night cream, or a day cream you can make this color very easily so it will hopefully give you some inspiration so yeah today's uh, one of the things is that uh, color of the year is peach fuzz sorry <laughs> right so i'm going to do some of my um shaving um and yeah so as a man you know you have to a little bit take care of your um you know um your face with the beard it's just I like to grow it and a lot of people actually tell me also like you should I should look at my brows but <laughs> honestly with you it's more um I don't really care about it because everybody says oh you have a little bit of brow here just kind of like pluck it out and make it all no <laughs> I'm not going there I like my cosmetics I like my beauty but I don't know I'm not sure there yet to actually make it more um uh, you know grow me maybe I should but you tell me in the comments too um, right, so let's just wet my face. Uh, I'll just do this quickly and I come back to you. Okay, so I'm almost done. So I'm going to talk to you about the next global trends for next year. Is um, a lot of people are talk really tired of greenwashing that is happening in the industry. Um, you know, it's like uh, how do they provide their sustainability? How do they actually? Um, you know, convey their sustainable message. You know, is there, do they include sort of a percentage to say like X amount of plastic has been recovered? Are they carbon neutral? If they're carbon neutral, how do they achieve this? So it's just not like pretty words. You have to now talk about the react, you have to be more transparent. And uh, as far as I heard, next year, European Union is going to uh, bring I think they're to still talking about it, but it might become low end of next year is that um, they're going to introduce anti-greenwashing bill, which is sort of like, you can't say, oh yeah, we have this, this going on, this, we saved this amount of water. You have to back it up with your proper transparent uh, claims. Otherwise you just be, you know, penalized for it. So yeah, that's greenwashing and it's important and everybody talks about you know you have to be become as a consumer you have to also become quite educated and be aware of yes we all need you know green green credentials for a company but you have to be also a little bit more about you know how are they doing this you need to be um 
aware of this? Going, what well, if a company talks talks about it? Then how are they talking about it? What is the message they're giving it? You know, and then what's their credibility on this? So look at if you're looking for uh, always, you know, the best way to find this is go to a brand's web page and then look for about us and their sustainability and then read through with the lines. Sometimes you just find not find you just pretty words and no claims like how do they achieve this? You know, this there's no transparency and that's the biggest fo fo failure. I've seen brands that you know they're quite you don't even know who owns it. Like, what is this? You know? So yeah, just go educate yourself and be aware of these things. Next thing is about um, uh, peptides. For apparently peptides are going to be huge next year in 2024. So um, why is this? Because they think that peptides are more bioactive and they're more, um, their active ingredients are more have credib credibility in the skincare industry. So they are, you know, um, these op these peptides can be obtained from rice, uh, from beetroot, from sugar, could be anything. But they are quite potent, and so that's why there are a lot of consumers are waking up. Like we don't need too much of the peptides, but they are quite potent. And then with a small amount, you can actually get some really good results on your skin. So. If you're formulating brand, if you have a brand on there, if you're formulating products, maybe look at the peptides. They're quite expensive if you want to buy as a raw ingredient. So um, just maybe, but look, always look at the ingredient supplier as well. Like what are their claims about the peptides? For example, um, Evonik is one of the biggest ingredient suppliers. And then just be, um, they have a peptides. Um, and is it natural or is it also, you got like a synthetic peptides and then, What's happening is um, you need to make sure their claims are you know backed up and they always read the product sheet. So apparently peptides are going to um, big in next year, and it, and that's what the consumers are looking for. Um, next thing is skin. Uh, also, consumers are looking for skin brightening and skin radiance, especially in the Asia. I heard this is a big thing over there. I've never been to Asia myself. But this is apparently happening over there. Um, I'm just gonna get myself a uh, one of the products I formulated. This is my own hyaluronic acid serum. Um, it has four dimensional hyaluronic acid, and it has a lot of actives in it, um, such as um, the pink nectar, which is an extract from uh, the seashore flower, and it's quite an exclusive uh, thing. It, Took me, it's a bit expensive to get it. So I got that one. You got betaine in it. Um, got the hyaluronic acid in it, and it has algal water in it, and it has also a lot of other little things like um, I have gin tonic, which is sort of not your gin tonic to drink, but it's a, a byproduct of gin. Uh, byproduct is an ingredient like more pot, um, more hydrating than glycerin. So I'm using like kind of really good ingredients. Um, this is one of the products I'm planning to release next year. So I'm just gonna show you the, um, it's a little bit liquid at the moment, but the consistency is quite good. I'm using a probiotic based um, thickener called Prebuline. Um, if you're interested on that, I can send you, I can put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the links down below. Uh, Prebuline is obtained from chicory and agave, and it's very, very potent in sort of like using xanthan is actually gives you probiotic um, benefit as well not just um, just the hydration from xanthan or just a gelling agent it has gelling agent as well so it's one of the um, really good uh, it's a dutch based company called gobiotic ingredient and it's really uh, it's not too expensive to obtain either but i'll just use that as my on my skin and it's actually uh, i've seen effect of it so obviously it has hyaluronic acid in it as well so uh, right back to next thing is you know the cop 28 happening is in in dubai which has been a bit controversial but the good thing that come out of there that they're talking this company is managed to um tackle the seaweed seaweed waste apparently in california uh, there is a specific type of, a specific type of seaweed called sargassum and it kind of washes all the and it just creates this massive uh you know methane F, methane gas coming out probably dries on the sh in the beaches and it creates this massive pollution um so a company in california i think 
uh, I don't remember the name on top of my head, but they basically what they're doing is they manage to uh, upcycle all this seaweed, all this dead sea waste, seaweed, and they manage to make, a, I believe, emulsifiers and some other cosmetic ingredients to actually push the cosmetic industry to use these kind of ingredients to reduce the food, food uh, pollution and that's one of my also um, companies that's also my brand's values so you know you, it, it's very really, really promising to see industries moving that direction to actually reduce the food waste and the, this pollution that happening all the time you know, uh, as a consumer ourselves, we have to also have to be very, very aware of like, it goes back into greenwashing. You have to look at like what the company is doing to tackle food waste, well, pollution, plastic waste. You just need to look at it. And it's always good to incorporate these things into, um, it's always good to incorporate these things into, um, if you're a brand owner, incorporate these materials in your formulations and innovate. So. You just, it's, I like the innovation and it's always the ingredients, skincare industry is always in innovating because what can we do more? So that's really interesting. I'll put a link for the story news and you can read it yourself, but it's really good. Um, another thing is that I read there was the Cosmoprof Asia just happened. I think it was in November. No, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, November. Uh, and what happened is that, you know, the Korean, the Japanese, in, uh, skincare industry was actually the trends that are happening over there is um, they apparently really like active ingredients a lot so they're especially niacinamides and retinols so apparently Korean brands and Japanese brands are really really big going big on retinols and retinoids so uh, there are a lot of brands that are bringing products retinol based and the, I think it's they even prefer it of other than hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. So retinol is actually very good for your skin. It's, it could be it's synthetic, but you have now also alternative natural ones that are coming on the market. They are actually challenging the synthetic retinol. So as you know, you can't really you uh, add a lot of retinol. There's it kind of damages your skin if you put too much. So there's a global limit around zero point two is your maximum and um so basically yeah but it's so but it's very effective uh, as an as a active ingredient retinol so korean and japanese brands are going really big on those next thing they're also really big is santella asiatica uh, uh, extracts so you know there are a lot of korean brands who love this uh, santella asiatic extract and rice brown filtrate that kind of ingredients so um i believe a certain a house uh, a house of Jason, uh, Jason, they also use a lot of rice brown, rice filtrate or rice extract. So, um, yeah, so this is also interesting news. So, if you're formulating, uh, if you're using, um, like if you're formulating the kind of toners, serums, you know, you can also, you, you know, go big on retinols, niacinamides, actives. And I also know from my uh, formulation videos, you all always talk about. Uh, adding all these active ingredients so um, my community is very well aware of this but go go beyond so there's a huge thing from the Korean and Japanese brands driving these active ingredients and I'm gonna show you I just what I didn't show you I have a cleansing balm that I, I've done it so I've been using and testing it it's a little bit thick at the moment I'm just gonna show you the texture so as you know, there are a couple of brands that are really big with the cleansing balms, but I also like it as well. I know I put some hyaluronic acid already, but I just want to show you the texture. So uh, it's a little bit thick at the moment, but it actually removes the makeup, at, um, makeup, and then it really hydrates your skin. Um, and it has a really a little bit of subtle flavor of grapefruit in it, just to kind of give that positivity. Um, positivity. So this is my own. Uh, it has pomegranate sterols in it and it also has hyaluronic acid in it and it also has in the upcycle up squalene so I actually managed to find uh, squalene that is made from discarded olives which is great I love squalene it's one of the beautiful most beautiful skin skincare ingredients it makes your skin so soft even if you just use raw material just 100% squalene it really makes your skin so soft I love squalene so yeah, this 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 little bit thick is but just because instead of like using 
petrol petrol derived thickeners i'm actually using pomegranate sterols which is a barrier re uh, restoring ingredient that is made from pomegranates pomegranates and it's very thick so i think i just need to adjust a little bit but yeah i just want to show you my nice uh, cleansing bar i'm just gonna wash my face with this and yeah, I'm just gonna wash my face with it, and the next time I show you, I'll put out some makeup and I'll show you how effective it is. It's really effective. So um, yeah, another thing is interestingly, from the UK, UK Boots opened their first Boots Beauty specific store in um, Battersea um, Power Station. I'm just gonna put a picture over here. So it's interesting that Boots, as you know, in the UK is. Um, they are like specifically known as, you know, drugstore, but it's a part of their be feeling probably challenged by Sephora. As you know, Sephora also launched in the UK quite recently. And um, I think they're just trying to um, show sort of, they're just trying to, um, you know, capture the market in a way that is like beauty, you know, only space. And I haven't been to the store, but when I go, I'll just, maybe I'll just show you some, clips of it when I go there. It's not really on my way because I, even though I work in London, it's not really sort of um, right near where I work, but I'm curious about it. So I might go drop. If I do, you'll see in my shorts videos. So yeah, that, that was interesting. It was all over the news that Beauty Boots opening a specific beauty store in London. So probably they're trying it at the moment to see how the consumers, how, if they're gonna buy it or not. So. Yeah, I mean, I just love this cleansing beauty, cleansing mom. It's just the grapefruit scent is actually quite good. I'm actually formerly an unscented version. And do you also want to ask a lot of people are, oh, I don't like fragrance and I don't want to go near anything with the fragrance. Some people actually want to have it. So what's your opinion about fragrance free and adding a bit of fragrance? So let me know in the comments, you know. If you were like, if you want to buy a cleansing balm or any other kind of beauty product, do you avoid? Uh, do you actually avoid uh, fragrance free? So, and another thing, I'm uh, just looking at my notes here. That we will talk about it. Um, yeah. So, for, uh, the upcycling trend is also going to get bigger. Um, if you're not a consumative formulator, you might be wondering, well, what is upcycling? So upcycling is actually making new products from waste waste discarded um, ingredients like as i talked earlier about like you know uh, seaweed that could be upcycled and make it something new so it's the difference between recycling is just you make the same thing you take it recycle you make the same thing upcycling is actually you, you take the, uh, the the discarded ingredients and you produce something new so that's why it's called upcycling and this trend is going to take further and further. There's a lot of greenwashing around it. You know, I've come across some brands who are talking about, oh, you know, it's um, it's upcycled, but you just have one one little ingredient in it. It has like a 99% it's, not, it's nothing. So uh, what I'm trying to do, for example, I'm going to try to formulate 95% upcycle just to give a lot of impact, you know, of the brand is actually trying to do something. So uh, if you're from later, like, challenge yourself to find these kind of ingredients that are like upcycled and then try to work with them. They work exactly the same as like a normal ingredient because the way that they, you know, manufacture this is as close as like uh, producing, you know, like a brand new thing, you know, it's like the squalene, for example, you can buy like a squalene from the olives, but how about like uh, using, squ getting squalene from discarded olives. So they're still olives, but they're just waste instead of going food waste, you're producing something. Uh, I just noticing my skin is getting quite shinier and shinier. So, right, and I just want to show you that my last, uh, uh, my last product. This is a facial oil. It looks quite blue. I'm aware because I put blue tans in it, and it just makes that fancy kind of blue. And um, this was a, this is as you can see is very watery. The reason is I used a lot of uh, very light esters, so it is sort it is very. As you can, it's very, very watery. The reason is a lot of people, uh, consumers don't like grease on their face. And it, I'm just using a little bit and it kind of absorbs it very, very fast. 
and people don't want very oily things in it so uh, that's why I formulated with a lot of esters in it you still got really beautiful uh, oils in it like prickly pear you got like a uh, raspberry oil uh, that is from upcycled raspberry oil and I also have some uh, vitamin C in it well the vitamin C here is ascorbyl tetrazopalmitate which is like very stable stable um, very stable uh, form of vitamin C and um, and you don't need much I mean it's just already like start absorbing it and you can see a little bit shiny but it's just gonna disappear now because I put a lot of uh, very super light esters like coco caprile, uh, hemisqualane, these things are like super light, you know, so it won't stay on your skin forever. So um, just, just absorb it like that. So this was the last thing. Uh, I'm just gonna use this uh, in my, especially in my um, formulations, these kind of ingredients, but this is like what I come up with. It's, I just wanted to make a very super light facial oil. Um, so I'm just looking at my notes. Is there anything else that you'd be interested in? Interesting. Yes, talking about um, talking about trending ingredients. There's also fermented ingredients that are going to be. So fermented ingredients it comes of like fermented, uh, you know, filtrates like the rice ferment or you know brown rice ferment and things like this. And the reason is because they're very gentle on the skin and they are very easy to formulate and it also have this beneficial microbiome uh, probiotic effect on the skin as well so along, apart from peptides these um th these fermented ingredients are also going to take off next year so if you're formulating look at these in ingredients and then you know if you make a beautiful toner you can make a really beautiful toner out of this so uh out of like filtrate i just add it with your water at these filtrates as an extract, add some hyaluronic acid in it, some glycerin in it, and you get a really beautiful toner, you know, just sprays of, or it's a spritzer, you know, so. Um, yeah, so I think I doubled the love. love. <laughs> so um, let me know in the comments, how you think of the format? Do you like the news? Would you like to know more? And next week, I'm going to plan to release a hyaluronic acid that I talk about hyaluronic acid, uh, formulation that I spoke last week so this is just kind of like testing out new format of videos I hope you like it let me know in the comments and until next time see you later take care bye